guys, welcome back to the Smitty and D Show. Of course, I am Tony D. And in the studio, guys, um, she's my new sis. We're gonna go hang out later. <laughs> she's a philanthropist. She is an entrepreneur, reality TV star, wife, mother. I wanna say a coach. I am not um, a wife. I am not oh, a reality star. I can't wait. We're gonna keep this intro, baby. Keep reading. I can't wait to correct all <laughs> of what, what Google has told you, okay? We're gonna get it straight. She's an ex-wife. She's a mother. An ex reality star. Let me do that whole thing again. <laughs> keep it. No, keep it. Go. I can't even get through my intro. Cause you out you Googled the intro. Let's be clear. I did. Listen. Because I was like, I don't know as much, which is good though. It's, but see now you got a lot to talk about. You don't call exactly. me a wife. I'm not a wife. Ex wife. I'm a reality star. That, ex reality star. I was one of star. the first like ever in life. All right, guys. <clears throat> Welcome to the Smitty and D show. <laughs> She is a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, a mother, a coach, and now an author and a doctor. Welcome to the show. Hi. Dr. Shanita Foster. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? What up? Detroit's in the house. Yes. What school you? What's that? What's that? Jefferson and Connors. I went to cast take a rapper girl. Oh, okay, I went to Oak Park girl. Mm -hmm. So in the fight, she will win. Just Definitely saying. gonna win the fight. Just saying. Fact. But if we fight y'all, we both gonna win. Oh, do you know I told somebody that I said what y'all don't know about people from Detroit? We might not like each other. We might be mad. But if some go down, it's always us against them. Always. Like, we are the best African tribe there <laughs> ever is, okay? Because we're going to stick together. We are together. the Nigerians Baby, we gonna of stick. the United States. We are going to stick to. That's why the saying Detroit versus everybody. everybody. That's where that it's comes real. from. Because it's us against everybody. We it's might not real. do. We might not get along. We might not like each other. But if y'all come gonna for fight us, you. Oh, we're going to fight together. you. Together. Together. And win. And win. Guns or fists. Every time. So, what you miss about Detroit? What do I miss about Detroit? Um, I don't know. Sometimes when I go, I think that I miss the feeling of home. But I have grown so much um, that at times I feel like I, I've grown home. Okay, I miss better made potato chips. <laughs> I miss Fago Fago Rock and Rye. <laughs> I miss White Castle. Okay. I miss driving down Jefferson with the windows down. Uh, going Mr. Bell Hey! Uh, so that part, I miss I miss my childhood memory. So mm -hmm. I definitely uh, miss that part. But yeah, other stuff, uh, I could leave it. What about corned beef sandwiches? Corned beef. I forgot about corned oh beef. God. Have you been to Lou's Deli? Yeah, as soon as I land. It's like one of the first places. Like, I'm going to gain 30 pounds when I In real home. life. If, real when life. I land... It is from the airport to the first gas station off the exit. I'm getting chips. I'm getting better made potato chips. I'm getting Fago, Rock and Rye, or Peach. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to get a Hostess. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go up to the next exit right off a 12-mile telegraph from mm -hmm. the airport. I'm going to stop at White Castle. Yeah, get me a number one mm. with cheese. Yes, mm. I got to make sure. And I'm going to tell them I'm them. from out of town so I can make sure all my food is hot. Right. Then when I drive into the city, once I hit Greenfield, and I hit that Oak Park Southfield border. I'm gonna go to Lose Delhi. So before I even make it to where I'm going, can we get a shout out to Lose? Can we get a? Can they sponsor us? Lose, can you send us some food? I'm saying. <laughs> do you know I go to Lose Delhi, and I pack five, six sandwiches. Right, I have them separate them like the so meat. So you can the, take them with you. Yes, on the plane. All yeah. this, every single time I come home. Yeah. And I got a big bag of chips. I get Vintners. I think that's the name of it. Yeah. And then uh, Better Made, and then I get Better Red made. Devil. I get it all. Yes. And Hostess. Yes. Definitely. Listen, we are serious about our snacks. I am. And you know, it's so funny. A lot of people, uh, lightweight social media, didn't know I was a Detroit girl. They always give me the Cali. I don't know why. Mm. They're like, you're from California? I'm like, because I'm light-skinned? No. Mm. So, yeah, I'm a Detroit she girl. She will whip your tail Listen, and cut your face. Let me tell you the growth in me. I tell people <laughs> sometimes when they test me, I be like, let me just show you something so that we can fix the conversation. So, all these little marks that are between my knuckles, I remember when I used to fight and I used to punch people in the mouth. And my dad used to say, well, can you wait till they mouth closed? <laughs> <laughs> I have come a long can way. Can you please tell people? Because so, I tell people all the time, being from Detroit, you got to know how to fight. You got to know how to fight. It's, we, a, it's, a, it's we, a hobby. It's a requirement. It's a requirement it's a to requirement. live in that you have to, city. You, you have to... 
even if you don't physically fight, you're going to have to know how to stand up for yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely. It's a real thing. It's a real yeah. thing. All right. So, whew, your hustles. You are a hustle mama. Do you feel like you got that from Detroit? And then what, when did you cross over from hustle to business? I definitely know the hustle um, comes from Detroit. Mm-hmm. Like, we are born that way. We are born... Most people don't like when they say it like this, but pimps, prostitutes, drug dealers, I mean. Um, Hairstylists, that nail techs. Yeah, it, mm. it was a staple of where we're from, what we are made of, how we were built. When I go back to some of the history of how my grandfather even got to Detroit, it was to go work for the big three, Ford, GM, Chrysler. You know, that was the thing to do. And so I always grew up watching everybody in my family like move and get it um i used to be upset when i grew up that my mom had three four jobs like for real for real like my whole life my mom to this day is crazy i i take care of my mother Mm. by the way shout out to my mom lives with me Mm. doesn't have a bill Mm. bought her a car Mm. so they still got two jobs like i don't know why it's 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 in her. I'm like, you know, you could quit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there was a time I put her on allowance thinking like, okay, let me give you an allowance. Just be a grandparent. All you got to do is take care of when Jordan was born. Just just be the nanny. I don't even have to pay for a nanny. I could pay my mom. Mm-hmm. And it was just, in, she can't. Like, mm. she won't. Like, it's just like we're, we're born that way. And so um, I just remember uh, one of my friends, Antonina Griffin, she did an interview the other day. And they said, when did the hustle start? And she was like, selling candy in school. And that was me. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a true business person, you're going to sell something. And so um, it started in school when I realized that if I had something that was tangible and somebody would pay money for it, I'm like, now, wait a minute. I can make money. So I was always trying to figure out, okay, what could I do? And they made the mistake of putting me in the Girl Scouts. Baby, I sold more cookies (laughs) than anybody (laughs) when it came to the region. And so I realized that. And there's a saying that I say all the time, and people think that somebody told it to me. But it's something I realized at an early age that the sellers are rich and the buyers are poor. Mm. And so most of the time, the buyers are poor. There are people who spend money that they don't have, overspend um, to look a certain way, to live a certain way. But the sellers, sellers are rich. Yeah. So I always wanted to be a seller. So it is always my goal to figure out what can I sell or what can I provide for someone that they want? If I can provide a product or a service to somebody, I'd never be broke a day in my life. Mm. I hear that. You know, that's old perfume. I used to take my foster mom's perfume and I would dilute it with water Ooh. and boil it with like flowers and stuff and put it in like unused little bottles and sell it to kids at school. Shut up. You were selling perfume? I was selling perfume. <laughs> child. And then when I got to high school, I was doing hair. Okay. And then in college, yeah. I was- I'm sad I missed a cosmetology book. Because I can't do hair, I can't do nails, Thanks. I can't do makeup. If you're from Detroit, shout out to Ming Lee. I'm just saying. Uh, and Gaucher. Hey, uh, Gaucher. Hey, Gaucher. Yay. Hey. Uh, Gaucher, I'm really close to uh, Gaucher. Mm-hmm. You know, you're supposed to know how to do hair and nails and makeup. I don't know how I you missed see that this? one. She did this herself, honey. Yeah, I didn't. I had to go pay. <laughs> you hey, can make Chanel. the money. Chanel beat the whole face. I can't do Thanks, makeup. Thanks, Chanel. <laughs> All right, cool, 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 cool. Okay, so let's talk about the kids a little bit. Okay. So your baby, how many kids do you have first off? Whew. This is so her I heart. To, no, well, I have to explain it because, like, I get drugged sometimes by this. So I say six kids, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't birth six kids, right? But I biologically have three children. I have three girls, Jordan, Jada, and Jersey. Mm-hmm. So those are my biological. Once I began to travel and I was going to the continent of Africa, my son ended up being my first translator. Another story, another day, I take up the whole show. <laughs> but my son, I ended up adopting my son and bringing him to the US from Aswatini. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughter, long story, another day, met her at the bus stop. Uh, when my ex had a football game and it was a big event in Cincinnati 
And at the time he was playing for the Detroit Lions, I met my daughter at the bus stop. Long story, but just let's just say I got in a car, drove, picked her up, and she never went back. So mm. I ended up adopting my daughter. And then, you know, I was married to an athlete, so, mm -hmm. you know, I have a stepdaughter. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Your baby, just recently, I don't know how recent, but she, did she go to, through cancer? So that's my oldest, Amber. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. she had... Um, had has I don't know how to pronounce it right. Mm -hmm. I want the people to come after me. <laughs> uh, ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. um, and it was crazy because I was actually in Nigeria working, and um, it was right before Christmas. And I got the call. They asked me to come um, to Nigeria for two weeks, and I said okay. It was the minister to F FCT or FTC. I always mess it up. I think it's FCT, and she invited me to come for these series of events. And my daughter texts me, and, and I've gotten into the habit. There used to be an old Shanita where money came first, mm. and I almost lost my family. I lost my children because it was about the art of the business first. Mm -hmm. And I took some hard hits where I realized we get one life to live, and so I have to make time for the things that are important. So I don't care where I am, what I'm doing. If one of my kids call, I'm stopping. Mm -hmm. So I see my daughter call me, and I say, hey, guys, you know, can you give me one second? One of my kids are calling, and I step to the side, and it was Amber, and she says, hey, mom, are you busy? And I said, well, I'm in Nigeria. She said, well, when are you coming home? And I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, well, I don't want to tell you now. I said, just tell me now. And she said, I just left a doctor, and they said, I have, I think at the time, maybe stage two cancer. And I said, okay, do you want me to come home? This is the power of how I know I raised my children a certain way. My daughter was like, come home for what? She said, if you come home right now, I'm still gonna have cancer. She said, so I just wanted you to know. So when you get home, I really need to talk to you. And so I went through that entire trip, like mm -hmm. knowing that when I landed, I had to face the reality uh, that one of my children uh, had cancer and I didn't know what the journey was gonna look like. Uh, fast forward, it was very hard. Mm. Uh, I went through like pretty much all of my savings because even though we have a healthcare system, it's not the best healthcare system mm -hmm. in the world. And so what you want to do is you always want to provide the best. And so I was, uh, she chose treatment in Arizona. So I literally was flying back and forth wow. from Arizona, uh, from Atlanta to Arizona and the cheapest ticket. I'm talking about on my worst date was $650. So y'all start doing the math. And I'm jumping on a flight. I'm never going to miss a chemo trip, man. I'm never going to miss uh, what's happened. And I just remember she, I think she FaceTimed me. And she was just talking to me. And I could see in her face all her hair had fell off. And uh, she was starting to lose her eyebrows. And she was starting to lose her eyelash. And I said, hey, come home. And she said, why? I said, I'm going to cut my hair too. She's like, no, mom, you're not going to do it. I was like, I'm going to do it. I said, come home. Just come home for the weekend and just let me cut my hair. If we're going to go through it, let's go through it together. I can't suffer like you. I, I don't know what it feels like, but I definitely can look like you through this journey. And um, I went and uh, we did just small intimate friends or whatever. And I called uh, Kill Bill Detroit. You know, you always got to find a Detroit person. He's a, a, a barber from Detroit and he had just cut uh, Tammy Rahman's hair. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tammy. Mm -hmm. um, and sh I seen her on Instagram and I said, hey, I saw that you shaved Tammy's hair. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but can you come to my house and cut my hair? It's going to be an intimate thing. And I didn't realize until that moment, like, I'm not being funny how vain I am. Like, I wanted my hair. I was like, how am I going to do this? I'm like, no. I'm like, no, wait a minute. Like, I got, I had real hair. Some mm. people don't have hair. They don't mm. have edges. Mm. I had my hair. I had edges. Mm -hmm. I could walk around in a ponytail. Mm -hmm. But I knew um, I had to do it for my daughter. And I just remember all of the other kids and my mom, they shaved this little heart in the back of their head. And I was like, huh. And I just remember, it's a video on my Instagram. I saved the video. Mm -hmm. But she cut my ponytail because I had this big, bushy ponytail. She cut the ponytail. And, like, as he shaved my hair, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And so our routine was I would fly to Arizona. She would pick me up. We would go get a haircut because, for thank God, my hair was coming back quick. I mean, in one week, I would start to get the bristles and I would mm -hmm. look weird. So I would land, mm -hmm. we would get a haircut, mm -hmm. we would go to chemo for about six to seven hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Lit, yeah, 
six to seven hours. Her chemo was long, like Jeez. six to seven hours. So I would sit there uh, for six to seven hours. And then one of my um, ex-football wife friends, Amanda Davis and her family, uh, they became a staple. So they made sure food was coming back and forth um, to the hospital. And so we did that and then we would leave and then we would try to pick, even if she couldn't eat, we would try to pick a favorite restaurant mm -hmm. to make light um, of the whole thing. But yeah, we did that for at least a year. And then finally um, she was able to stop traditional chemo and then go into something, I don't know, don't get me into all the medical stuff, but we got to ring the bell mm. to cross the finish line of that part Amen. and then uh, go into the next part. But it was hard. And I, I added India Irie on Instagram. I was like, girl, I don't know why you wrote that song. I am not my hair because I am my hair and I can't wait and for it to lashes. go back. <laughs> and his eyebrows. And, listen. <laughs> and my daughter, I love that she allowed me to express myself, I said, mm -hmm. Amber, this is hard for me. Mm -hmm. I speak to presidents and diplomats. Mm -hmm. I go into uh, corporate boardrooms. I was like, I don't I, like my confidence is gone. Mm -hmm. And so she said, oh, Okay, wow. this the, the compromise was whenever I had to speak or whenever I was going into a meeting that I would put on my wig for mm -hmm. those moments. But outside of those moments. I walked around and I stood in solidarity with her with a bald head. So, yeah. Mm. So, oof, I, I, the day she called me, I was like, Mom, you could grow your hair back. I was like, praise God. <laughs> I was like, Hallelujah. You're like, can I do it? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, like, my gosh. Yeah, so I was excited. Yeah. Okay, skipping or switching topics. What does success look like? And how does this play into your success story? How does it? Okay, so that's so cool. She got shot, 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 shot. Hey. So... Again, everything that plays into, let's just talk about success, not even my piece. Mm -hmm. Again, is finding the products and services that people want and need. Mm -hmm. We have been so, I don't want to use the word brainwashed, but we've been so suppressed for so long and we've had so many things taken away from us that we believe we have to invent the company or we have to start the brand or we have to, you know, build the company from the ground up. And no disrespect, I've watched a lot of other cultures that will find something and then they will buy a wholesale sell it retail and make it their own mm -hmm. and so i began to look and see now wait a minute why we always gotta start from the bottom i get it it's some products that we need to make for ourselves some brands that we need to create for ourselves but when i got introduced to network marketing home-based business and basically it was taking a product or a service that i already like that i already love mm -hmm. and just offering it to other people mm -hmm. i made a million dollars mm. in less than two and a half years. Mm. And so that was a light bulb for me that I don't have to make it. Mm. I don't have to own the name. Mm -hmm. I don't have to create it. All I have to do for me mm -hmm. is to enjoy it and like it mm -hmm. and share it with other people. Mm -hmm. And people laugh at me sometimes like, oh, you helping somebody else's dream. You getting somebody else rich. I'm like, well, what you do with Netflix? Cause you over there sharing these people password and passcode and it's the same thing i think facebook is the biggest pimp of them all because facebook said okay here's an app i want you to share with all your family and friends for free and then you share with all of your family and friends facebook now takes all of your network all of your people and then turn around and say in order for them to see you you want to pay us so we can promote it so you can see your friends and family that you already knew on the app that you sent them to and you you think I'm crazy? No, you're crazy. Because you just helped Facebook make a billion dollars and you're not mad at them, but you're mad at me for finding a product or service mm -hmm. that I love. This product aligned with who I was because the product is called Alive mm -hmm. and I'm a suicide survivor. Mm. And so when they had the product and all the ingredients was all natural, no additives, no no fillers, it's made in the United States, it was called Alive, I'm alive, it keeps people alive. Mm -hmm. Don't it make sense with my brand? Don't this make sense? Mm. People need to be alive. Y'all buy vitamins anyway and mm -hmm. they don't really work. You swallowing plastic. So, I mean, so when, when you talk about the, the art of business or you talk about the art of success for me um as long as i don't have to lose my morals my values or go to jail mm -hmm. i'm with it mm. Mm -hmm. speak about the suicide you're a survivor of suicide suicide survival talk about it 
I feel like, and I, even now I'm going through a, a complete healing journey that a lot of us have been sold a lie. We've been born and bred um, to really believe that if you go to school, go to church, be a good girl, do the right things, that life is just going to happen amazing for you. Uh, some people believe that even with affirmations, if you speak it and you believe it, it'll come. And I became one of those people that I, I did every single thing that they told me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about poster child mm. of good girl. And yet there came a point in my life that literally I woke up one day and I realized that I, I was unfulfilled. And I'm gonna tell you how and why. I was mm. in a big house. I live in a big house, seven bedrooms, seven bathrooms, uh, definitely not bragging or boasting or whatever the case may be. Cars were outside in the driveway. Um, had the family dynamics of what it looked like and feel like and all of these materialistic things. And I just remember laying in my bathroom. I had a gun to my head and everybody was like, oh my gosh, were your kids enough? I'm like, no. The people that say their kids are their ultimate why, they are sadly mistaken. Because when them kids disappoint them one day, mm -hmm. they're going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. I knew that my children weren't my everything. I thank God. I'm, I'm happy. I'm blessed. But my children weren't it. And as I laid there on the floor and I'm trying to figure it out and I'm trying to process and I laugh, I tell people, I even say it in my book, when you start planning your funeral in your head, you really don't want to die. Cause I'm like, is Fred Hammond going to sing at my funeral? <laughs> I like, cause he was one of my best from friends. Detroit. <laughs> right? and, you know, he did the forward from my book. One of my best friends. I'm like, so if Shout I kill out. myself, mm -hmm. is Fred really going to still show up? I'm talking myself through this mm -hmm. process. And as I'm crying and as I literally didn't want to miss as I'm loading a gun. See, some people, they play Russian roulette. They're like, oh, I'm going to stick one bullet in. I'm going to make sure we locked and loaded. So when I pull the trigger, I know that this is going to work. I know this is the end. It ain't going to be a glitch. It's not going to click. We ain't going to make a mistake. I'm not going to play. What if it go off? What if it don't? No, I'm loading all the bullets in. It's going to go. When I pull the trigger, it's going to go. And literally, I was sitting there. All the bullets was in the gun, locked and loaded. I'm ready to go, cry my tears, I'm okay. And it's all every epiphany in my life is like a conversation with God. And I said, God, I said, I apologize, this is it. And in that moment I said, but I don't know why. And it was literally the Holy Spirit said, when you lose your why, you lose your way. That's what got me up off the floor. I realized right in that moment, I wasn't unhappy with my life. I didn't, I wasn't lacking the things that I wanted or I needed. I had lost my why. I had stopped serving the reason why God put me on this earth, mm. meaning I was a server, but I, I that the serving aspect was being taken away from me. He was going through a transition, not playing football. So it wasn't like readily money there. Me, the old me, I just, baby, I, when I say the word philanthropist, I'm one. I ain't gave over $3 million of my money. So I could ask anybody for some money. They're like, how you ask people for money? I'm like, cause I gave money. Mm -hmm. So that that the aspect of me being able just to go on a bank account and pay for it, send a thousand dollars, send five thousand dollars, that has slowed down my trips. I, I mean, if you looked at me, people said I went to Africa like I was going to Miami. Mm -hmm. Where are you going, South Africa? Where are you going? I'm jumping on a plane. I'm moving. Mm -hmm. That had to slow down because finances were slowing down. Mm -hmm. And so as my why began to shift, I began to lose my way. Mm -hmm. And so I I almost clicked. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, when you lose your why, you lose your way. And I cried and I got up, but I still was in a depression. I stayed in a depression depression, almost probably a year, not bathing, not showering. Wow. And when I tell you, like people like, ain't no way, that's because I made great financial decisions. Mm -hmm. People didn't get a chance to watch everything around me fall apart because mm -hmm. I own my house cash. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like, ooh, she got to pay the mortgage. Mm -hmm. I have to pay no mortgage. All of my cars, I own cash. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no car note due. All my older children had to do mm. was make sure the lights was on, cell phones was working, and was food in the house. That's mm. not a lot of responsibility. So my, my life was still being maintained. Right. 
yet I was at my lowest point. And I just remember I was sitting in the closet. My best friend, she's in the book, by the way. Hmm. She came over to my house one day, and I just knew it. I was like, somebody coming to save me. And I was in the closet crying. I was just laying on the floor crying, crying, crying. And she walked in, girl, she started shopping in my closet. She started picking out purses and shoes. She was like, girl, I'm getting ready to go somewhere. And in the book, I asked her, I was like, friend, you didn't know I was in a depression? She said, girl, I'm looking around at Louis and Gucci and Birkin. And I'm like, what the hell is she crying for? Mm. So in her mind, she like, I, what are you crying about? There's nothing for you to cry about. Oh, my God. The person that got me out of the closet is one of my friends, Sabrina. I am one of the godparents to her children. And she called me. And it's, it's good to have people that just know your voice, know mm -hmm. your tone. And she called me and she could tell in my voice. She was like, what's wrong with you? I don't know. And she drove to my house and I was funky, nasty pajamas, Uggs with the hole in it. Mm -hmm. She said, let's go. And we got in the car and she drove me to this park and we sat there and she said, what's wrong? I, she got me out the closet. I said, I don't know. She took me back home. She said, I'm coming to your house every single day and pick you up till you figure it out. And she kept coming. I'm talking about three days. Finally, she was like, girl, you got to take a bath. <laughs> Cause you're kind of like you gonna take a bath if you come <laughs> with me. But she was the first person that was like, "Okay, listen, I recognize something is wrong. Let's figure it out. Let's get some help." And she was also, I'm always gonna give credit. I'm always gonna give people their flowers. She was one of the first people to book me when I was coming out of my depression. Mm. And I said, Sabrina, she was doing a glam university sleepover at a big hotel, and she had a lot of people that were gonna speak. She actually had the lady that um, started Spanx, what's her name? Oh, um, uh, Sarah Berkeley. Sarah, Sarah mm -hmm. Berkeley mm -hmm. was at this event. Mm -hmm. Back then, Dana Chanel was popping uh, before she got all them charges. Dana Chanel was gonna be there. She had this roster of like successful people and she was like, you speaking at my event? And I said, friend, I said, I'm so broken. I'm so low. She said, that's even more reason mm. for you to stand up and go talk to these people. And so I give her credit in my book. I give her credit in life. She's the person that came and got me out the closet. Mm. So, yeah. Talk about your friendships, because, you know, we, we like to talk about that. But what is friendships like? I don't have no friends. <laughs> right? What are friendships like when, when, when you're in that whole celebrity lifestyle? You know, I, I, I mean, really, keep it real. We no, want I'm being to... real. I, I just think you don't have friends. I think you have people that are around you, chapter in the book, mm -hmm. um, that are beneficial. I walk in rooms. I feel like everybody goes into the room to, you know, see what they can get from the next person. How can they come up? How can they move up in life? Um, I, I've seen it. I felt it. I've lived it. Uh, depending on what chapter I am in my life, are the kind of friends that want to hang out with me. When you pop in, when you got the money, when you on a private jet, when you got access to football or basketball tickets or whatever the case may be, you're that girl. Mm -hmm. The moment that is not readily available for what they want and they need in their world, it changes. And so my heart has got broken so many times because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is my friend. But they're my friend in that season for what they can benefit mm -hmm. from me and what they can get. Like, I, I had a friend or I thought was my friend. When I had my house in South Africa, they were a staple because they knew, hey, I could travel to South Africa. She owned a house. I don't have to pay for nowhere to stay. I got rid of my house in South Africa. The, 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 the house left and the friend left. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's the same thing with sports, you know? I thought a lot of those women were my friends. But I began to realize as I went from team to team, place to place. And I don't think they meant it maliciously, but I was their friend for that moment. I was their friend for that team. I was their friend for that season. And so I think for me now, I have a lot of associates, mm -hmm. too many. I mean, yeah. people look at me, they be like, girl, you know, everybody. Mm -hmm. But are you my friend? Mm -hmm. And I believe that friendship comes with responsibilities. Mm. Friendship means that when my back is against the wall, you are there. Friendship means that you love me unconditionally. Friendship means that when I need you the most, you gonna show up with no excuses. I don't care nothing about no show, no appearance, who did what, when, where, and why, because when my friends call me, I'm coming. Mm. Like, I don't care where I am in the world. If they call mm -hmm. and they say I need me, Nothing supersedes mm. 
Mm. One of my friends needed me. And so it changed me. And Atlanta is a whole, this is a, I don't even know what to call Atlanta. It's just, it's, it's hard. It's a cesspool of climbers, social it, climbers and wannabes. It, it, it's hard. And so um, I've chosen to like find my people, you know, mm -hmm. find my circle. I don't always have to go when I'm invited. I'm okay when I'm not invited. Mm -hmm. Um, I found my space, my place mm -hmm. of peace and happiness. And what so happens when you're not invited? Let's, let's say a friend. Let me tell you, I used to be mad, baby. Really? I was like, ooh, girl. <laughs> Oh, I'll be like, oh, thank let you. Let me God, tell you, it used home. to be a season. Let me be transparent, honey. I would cry. I would be mad. I'm the friend that called three other friends to tell them, oh, girl, she did not invite me. And I, when I say the Holy Spirit and God dealt with me on another level, when mm -hmm. I say that I had mentors and people that loved me and cared mm -hmm. about me that said, girl, first of all, you're not even being invited. Because as soon as you walk in, sometimes your light just shines so bright. Mm -hmm. People don't even want you overtaking the room. Yes. And it wasn't on purpose. It mm -hmm. was me walking in being authentically me. Mm -hmm. I really love people. I really like people. I really want to hug you. I want to mm -hmm. touch you. I want to kiss you. Mm -hmm. I want to say, oh my God, I missed you. So I had to get past that. Um, and then once the Holy Spirit, God dealt with me and I dealt with myself, I realized that, okay, let me change this up some, cause I'm from Detroit. Like you don't mm -hmm. lost your damn mind. Like I don't you. need a seat at the table. I will buy the table. I will make a table. I will build a table. I will produce the table and I will be okay. Cause it's my table. Mm -hmm. And so once I got to that place, I think it set me free. Mm. And so now. If I'm invited, cool. But I still don't go sometimes because even if you invite me, no, seriously, if it don't make me richer, mm -hmm. smarter, or closer to God, I'm not going. Mm. Take too much to get ready. Mm. I got to pay somebody to do my makeup. I got to have somebody get my hair together. I got to pick out an outfit y'all never seen on Instagram because y'all so judgmental. I had to do all this work to go into a room that don't serve me for some people that not necessarily may even like me. So I was like, okay, let me now make sound decisions. You can invite me, but do I really need to be there? That's deep. Like you just spoke to me. Cause I feel like, God dang, I'm in these rooms. I'm like, I gotta get my hair done, my nail done, I gotta get my makeup done. And do done. they really want and, you there? And do they really want you there? And sometimes when you get the, the invite late, it's like, you ain't really want me to come. Oh no, honey. You I just didn't get enough RSVPs and they wasn't going to show up. And so you got to make sure some people come. So then you mm -hmm. called me. I, I'm um, bad for that. I will I'm not show up. I'm trying to tell you, but the people that pick up the phone mm -hmm. and say, I want you here. I make um I make a, a a conscious effort like shout out to Judge Tierney. This girl is a judge. love her. Let me tell you though, she's coming on the show. But this is what and you you tell her I said it. This is what made me shift my whole schedule. I was scheduled to be out of the country. Mm -hmm. I don't care if she called three hundred, three thousand, three million people. Mm -hmm. She picked up the phone mm -hmm. and she called me mm -hmm. and she said I'm having a book launch. I don't know where you're going to be at in the world, but you need to be here. Mm. And I said, no problem. I'm going to write in my schedule. I'm going to write in my book. And everything that I had to do, I catered around being that event because I felt like she invited me. Mm -hmm. She wanted me there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no fly by night, an email, an afterthought, a maybe. She thought enough of me to say, hey, I want you to be in the room. And I respect her enough to say, I'm going to be there. So if you call me, if you pick up the phone mm -hmm. and it's a phone call, mm -hmm. I, I don't have a choice. I'm coming. I love it. What's your motto? Do you have one? Um, like Oprah would say, uh, you know, believe them. If you, if, if no, uh, my Angela, if they tell you who they are, believe them. Oh, my motto. Have? No, I guess one of my models. I and I don't know if we're gonna talk about it. Peace, purpose, pay. Let's talk about in it. that order. Let's talk. I feel about like it. when you master your peace. Mm -hmm. You understand your purpose. Mm -hmm. Getting paid will be easy. Mm. And once I structured my life that mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. life changed. For mm. most people, it's the paid first. Mm -hmm. People don't even ask about their purpose till about to die. Most people. Mm. They they land on their deathbeds. I'm like, I want to figure out. I want to know what my purpose is. No, I know my purpose. Me and God had this conversation. It is very clear. I know mm -hmm. what I'm on this earth to do. I can die tomorrow. Mm 
Mm. And I know my purpose. Mm. But then outside of all of that, being a suicide survivor, my peace. My peace is priority. See, peace comes second or third or fourth on the list because you're in a rat race. You're trying to get paid. You're trying to feed your family. You're trying to break generational curses, trying to hold on to the marriage, trying to make your kids happy, and you forget your personal peace. And so for me, I said, now, wait a minute. If you master your peace first and then you understand your purpose, you never have to worry about how you're going to get paid because it's going to align. So it became my motto. As I go through this life of meeting people, do you have any advice for me and other people who are getting to that level of celebrity and being celebrated or recognized in the industry? What's your advice for, for child people who try to I be just a celebrity? Think, no, I just think people forget that celebrities are humans too. It's all controlled content. It's so much controlled content. People are broken, people are hurt. The marriage is falling apart. The kids bad. Their friends don't like them. They don't like they self. And so you put them in this box and you're like, oh, it's a celebrity, but I have to treat them a certain kind of way. Depending on who they are, I do believe there's a level of respect that you must give people. Like, I can respect that you gave me an assistant before I came on a show, somebody that was my contact person. Hey, what do you drink? That's respect, right? But you don't have to cater or coddle to me like I'm not a human being. Because I think when we put celebrities or public figures in a box, then you lose the value of them just being a human. And so I would say on the journey, like, don't judge people or base whether or not your relationship is going to be uh, how popular somebody is, how many followers they have, uh, how much money they have. I know some billionaire jerks. Like, I know some people that got a billion dollars and they jerks. Like, for real, you can Google them and they got a billion dollars and you'd be like, you're a jerk. Um, so that can't be what you're basing the premise of your relationships are. Build relationships authentically. I love that when I meet somebody, happenstance. I love when I meet a person, I don't even know what they do for a living. There's somebody in my life that came into my life that showed me so much value. And, you know, when I met the person, I didn't know anything about them, right? Nothing. Mm. I just knew they were like, okay, I want you to be the best version of you. You know, um, you're an entrepreneur. Let me help you serve, right? And the craziest thing about it was I got very close to this person. Like, I can say I love this person. And it wasn't until after I did all of that and got all of that that I found out they are a whole billionaire with a B. And for me, it, it was like, okay, but they're still a person. And even sometimes when I have a conversation with them, people are like, oh, but this person, I'm like, but I don't even see that person like that. And so I just learned that my relationships have to be based off of it being organic and, you know, what that person is to me, how they treat me, you know, what it looks like in our personal time. It doesn't matter how much money they have, what kind of car they drive or what they can do for me if they're a good person. And even though that person is a certified, bona fide billionaire with a B, mm. what made me the most impressed by them was that they authentically respected Shanita. And they said something to me that changed my life forever. They they said to me one day, they said, hey, you can meet people all over the world. You can meet people that have money that are smart. He said, but it's your heart. And I was like, okay, somebody sees who I am, mm -hmm. like as a person. So yeah, judge those people by that, not as a celebrity. Well, you have the floor. This is your final round before we go to our random questions. What? is on your heart. Do you want to clear up some rumors? Do you want to talk about Ooh, something? Oh, girl, no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, what you want to talk about? This is, well, I want this to is talk your about moment, about. baby. What uh, you, my just moment, give it to it. Give it to uh, us. I, okay, rumors. I don't really have a lot of rumors. Uh, this new rumor, it's not, I don't think it's a big rumor. I want to keep giving it life, but I thought it was funny uh, that I keep hearing that. That's why I say don't call me no pimp. Somebody said I'm a bad em at Africa. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh. So that one hurt. Ooh. Like it hurt bad yeah. because 
I love the African girl child. Mm -hmm. I'm all for women's rights. So that was like one that I heard that it stunk. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of got a, some legs to it mm -hmm. a little bit. Because I heard it a couple times. I was like, y'all can't be serious. Like, mm -hmm. I, I feed kids. Like, right. I'm taking sanitary napkins. <laughs> like, this is like y'all can't be serious, right? Uh, so that that is one. Do not play with my name. Um, I think, uh, what's another one? Why are you laughing? Girl, I love that, it. Girl, that bothered me. Because I because we, we just interviewed somebody else and they said, listen, no, Nigerian gossip is something else. Ooh, like when I say they get something, they just run with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't like that one. That one hurt to the core mm -hmm. because I'm really fighting for the African girl child. I'm really helping girls get sanitary napkins, get education, mm -hmm. get into STEM programs. Shout out to Nana. He does um, all of my things for my technico uh, technology programs in mm -hmm. Africa. So that one hurt. Um, if I could leave something with somebody... Um, I don't know, join me in business. Uh, I'm always going to talk about my business. I'm always going to talk about my money. So if you're going to run from that, you're going to be running from me for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to David Monita, um, Ivan Tapia. I am actually a part of a company that I get to change lives globally. Mm. Like we just had a one year anniversary. This is a one year old company that made $22 million in one year. Wow. We're in over, I think, like 52 countries, distribution centers, and it's sad that I'm really trying to help people find like financial freedom mm -hmm. or do what they wanna do in life, and they, it's just, it's not popular, or you know, it's not what everybody's doing. So I'm here to say join me, mm. uh, so that's another one. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, and that's it. I really want people to master their peace, understand their purpose, get paid, and just love hard. This mm. life is just so short. We don't know the time. We don't know the day. Uh, we don't know the hour. But if you wake up every day in peace and in purpose, and more so in love before getting the paid part, I think that you'll find life can be a beautiful thing, a beautiful place. I love it. Well, cheers to that, honey. Cheers. Cheers to that, amp. All right. So, babes. <laughs> my new friend okay are you ready i'm ready because we got something we got something going on we got something else okay what is it <clears throat> random questions I'm so nervous. Nervous. I'm nervous. okay so here are the rules you got to give me a quick answer you got to give it to me straight first thing to your mind or on your mind don't get me in trouble jesus i'm just saying okay if you got a funny story go for it but for the for the most part straight quick. to it okay, okay. all right first thing Dr. Shanita Foster, what trend do you want to see go away? What trend do I want to see away, go away? I'm glad I don't have no baby hairs. <laughs> I'm tired of baby hairs. Them things can go. I'm tired of uh, the over-sexual culture. Everybody thinking that it's okay to talk about pop that, spread that, do that. Mm -hmm. I want the trend of all my friends. Shout out to all my friends that's over 35, but can y'all stop twerking? And, and popping and shaking. Like, I, I want the trend to go away. I want grown women. I want sexy women to come back. Please, I'm, I'm asking. Cover up. Can we, can we come back? And I know I be, they be mad at me. Because they be like, I'm allowed to do what I want to. And I'm free. And I'm a woman. And who says? But I be like, it's a lot. I'm raising girls. And so I, I, can the trend hurry up and go? Can we go back to R&B love? Can we go back to where boy met girl and people really respected each That's other? That's why I listen to Nigerian music. Yeah, I'm just like, Because oh, <laughs> I'm tired of it. Everybody's mm. got to talk about whatever they got going on. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. Um, all right. What conspiracy theory do you believe in? UFOs, man. I don't hey! care what nobody say. Listen. Listen, man. Ain't no way on there's no, no way on God's green earth we here by ourselves. Ain't no way. Like my brother, uh, shout out to my Davis. He always talking about he's seen a UFO. But like I believe, like I don't know. I don't. I've seen a UFO. I'm just saying. Twice. I don't. We went to Cancun just a couple of weeks ago, and that sky was lit up like it was a war in the sky for hours. There was no lightning. There was no sound, and there was no thunder. Forever, yeah. and I asked the, my Nemeskin drivers. He was like, "Oh, the, the sky is <laughs> local." I was like, "Sir, y'all got a whole alien population over here." <laughs> not an alien. I, 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 yeah. That that is more. We're not here by ourselves. I'm just know. saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. okay. Um, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, okay. Real talk. When I when I was younger, 
I wanted to be a dancer, not mm-hmm. a stripper, y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, jazz, ballet, tap. Hence, I went to Center for Performing Arts, CASA, when I was going to Oak Park. So I just knew I was going to be a dancer. But then after that, I thought I was going to work for ESPN. I thought I was going to I be, could see you doing that. I wanted that. to be a sports commentator. I wanted to be the first female agent and sports agent. And back then, it wasn't possible, hence... I went into sports marketing, and I worked for some amazing athletes in my life. 17 years of working for NBA players. But back when I was doing it, it wasn't possible. Uh, Ron Artest, hey, Ron, Meta World Peace. I got to kind of be an agent. I I know, right? I Mm -hmm. got to kind of be an agent for one week because Ron had fired his agent, Mm -hmm. and he needed a new agent. Mm -hmm. And I remember Jerry Reinsdorf, one of the owners of the Bulls, like call me into a meeting. Like the Bulls upper management was like, okay, we need an agent. Mm. And I was like, I'm rep. I went in there, baby. I was ready. I was like, I'm here. And they were like, uh, you need a law degree. Ooh. Cause back then mm-hmm. in order to be a sports agent, you had to have a law degree. Contracts. So shout out to Ron yeah. Artest. I was a, a sports agent for mm-hmm. like one week. <laughs> and then we had to go interview all these people. Uh, to help him get a new Can I agent. tell you, I thought you were already kind of a sports announcer. I'm trying to tell you. I, I swear to God, I put that on everything. I was like, oh, okay, she's... she's now good. I see these girls, now I was like, that was my dream. Mm. Okay, if, you, if there was a biopic, who would you want to play you and your theme song that you walk around with in your head? Okay, um, theme song is um, easy. I play this anytime I, I'm coming out. It hasn't changed for a long time. I'm Not Afraid by Mm -hmm. Eminem. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's my theme song. When I hear the beat drop, Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of home. It Mm -hmm. reminds me of adversity. It reminds me uh, of who it came from. You know, Eminem and the whole movie 8 Mile and just fighting through adversity. So I'm Not Afraid has been my song for a long time. Mm It's been a couple in between. All I do is win and um, I'm getting ready to see all these different, but my theme song. Mm-hmm. Is that Eminem? I'm not afraid. Mm-hmm. Um, to see someone play me, who light skin? What you know the girl with that? Oh no, she ain't got an attitude. But the girl half and half. Ooh. But she's older. Maybe back in like 10, 20 years ago. I don't know. Remember I the like, show Half and Half. I don't know. Like I always liked Sanaa Latham. Or Craft. Do y'all I like Sanaa that? Latham. She doesn't look like me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always love movies mm-hmm. with her. And I don't know who could play me, but. Yeah, it, it would be. We're going to have to look up the girl from Craft, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who would narrate your life? Who can narrate um, my knife? Uh, the Lion King man. <laughs> you know the one who I'm talking James about? James Earl Jones? James Earl Jones got to narrate me, baby. He narrate all the greats. I need you. He narrated Jesus. He is Jesus in the Bible. Mm. If you go listen to the, the, the recording Bible or the mm. audio Bible, like if you talk about Jesus, you need to narrate for me so mm. let him go on and narrate my story all right this is gonna be a real random but i need you to think about this what has been your struggle as being a lighter skinned black woman i'm a hoe what i'm a hoe i'm light-skinned i'm cute i'm tall i slept my way to the top i want your husband i uh, i want everybody yes being light-skinned puts you in a category most time of being promiscuous or a hoe or want somebody man you have no idea and i hate to tell the story now there is somebody that is extremely prominent and we fixed it um that i made up with and i went to go see this woman at this big conference and i was so excited and at the end they were like oh you could pay you know to have a conversation with me like coaching or whatever and i went and paid my money because i believe when you pay you pay attention and i would never forget she gonna deny it. we gonna argue till the wheels fall off but i'll never forget i was in south africa i was standing on the richest square mile on the continent of africa i'm in santon standing on the rooftop of the building that I was working for. Baby, I made it, okay? Phone rings. Oh, my gosh. We have, you know, this session or whatever. And I was like, okay. And the first thing out of her mouth was, I just want to tell you, you don't have to sleep with people's husbands to get to where you want to be in life. When I say the tears started flowing, I was like, sleep with people's husbands? I was like, I ain't never even slept with nobody's husband. Matter of fact, I'm married right now, and I don't even like him most days. So, I, no, for real, I said that to her. I was like, 
I'm so lost. And she's like, what I'm saying? And I was like, you know what? I wanted, I was so broken. What did you see on me? What did you see about what would make you say that? I, 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 the, 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 the setting that you met me in was in a group setting with thousands of people. You could not have gotten that out of meeting me for 15 minutes in a group full of a thousand people. Mm. So either somebody said that to you, which would still be a lie, mm -hmm. or that's what you presumed. Mm -hmm. And so I carry that. I can't be an ambassador in this country or I can't go and work with this person because it's automatically assumed she light skin, she cute, she a hoe. Mm. She going to Africa to date the king and the prince and the president when, mind you, most of those people, they sit down and talk to me for five minutes. They're like, you're one of the smartest people I ever met in my entire life. They be annoyed sometimes because mm. all I'm talking about is business. If you pay attention to me, it's a standing joke with people that know me. Go through my Instagram. Every picture that I take, I take with my hands in front of me. Mm -hmm. You even said it like, mm -hmm. oh, you put your hands in front of me. Mm -hmm. I put my hands in front of me because I don't want you to make any mistake that anything or anything that I'm doing, anybody that I'm standing next to is anything mm -hmm. other than business. Mm -hmm. So I don't let men hug me, don't touch me, don't put your arm around me. Oh, wow. I tell people, if you see me on Instagram and somebody got their arm around me and I got my arm around them, we go together. Mm. Just, you don't even have to guess it, we go together. Mm. Outside of that, I have to set a strong boundary because mm -hmm. this is the biggest perception, being light-skinned. Wow. And I don't like it. And most of the time, most light-skinned girls ain't even doing nothing. Mm. But you just going to throw, oh, she slept her way to the top. Oh, she's sleeping with this person. Oh, did it? So, yeah, that's the biggest one for me. All right, here's a here's a controversial one. Plastic surgery. How do you feel about I'm it? I'm with it. What did you get done? I feel, oh, me? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if we could call it plastic surgery. Because mm -hmm. if I could get some stuff done, baby, I would do a whole bunch of stuff. Well, just like uh, alterations. But no, no, but back in the day. So first of all, I'm a face person. I only mm -hmm. get one face. Y'all can talk about me all y'all want to. I'm getting mm -hmm. all the Botox, all the fillers, all the everything. I want to be young forever, okay? So shout out to uh, Dr. Reza in uh -huh. South Africa. Shout out to Jing Jing right here in Buckhead on Miami Circle. I'm going to get this face together. Mm -hmm. I have had, um, I had a stomach issue. And at the time, they were like, okay, do a tummy tuck. I birthed kids. So that has been a part of the journey. Lipo to me don't even count. Because if y'all look at me, I done been fat a couple times over. <laughs> so, I, listen, lipo does not count. <laughs> it's general anesthesia, depending on where you're going. That's like going to the dentist, okay? Um, so lipo really don't. No, for real. Oh my I God. don't think you should do lipo and lot of people and say you really lost the weight. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, you know, lipo, people always. Now, here's the biggest misconception, um, especially about my butt. Mm -hmm. I want my booty done. Mm. I want my butt up. Like, if I got naked, it look real good in Spanx. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it look good in Spanx. Mm -hmm. But I'm like. Just in Spanx. In Spanx. It look real good. <laughs> like, it's it up and it's right. It's like a bra. You know how you mm -hmm. put on a bra? And you see a girl and them things be lined up and you be Listen. like, ooh, them things look good. And you get there and she take off her bra and them and things hit her navel. Her knees, yeah. yeah, like, so it's the same thing with my booty. Like, mm -hmm. it look nice in Spanx. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I could get that thing to go up and round and, yeah. So I'm not against plastic surgery. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm against plastic surgery when it becomes detrimental uh, to your mental health. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like women who say, oh, I got to go do this to get this person or, oh, mm -hmm. I got to go do that. I think it should be a, a, a age cap. Mm -hmm. I think that women really shouldn't be able, and y'all get mad if y'all want to, women shouldn't be able to get lipo or any type of surgery to their 30. I feel like your body hasn't mm -hmm. fully developed yet. I, I feel like you don't know if your hips going to spread or mm -hmm. if you're going to lose weight. It's girls getting surgery at 21, mm -hmm. 18, 19. I'm seeing girls getting signed off for their parents to let them get their boobs done. I'm like, it's too much. You don't know who, excuse me, who you are or mm -hmm. what you're going to be. So can you wait till you get 30 and then if you don't like it, then we can. Yeah. Okay, so did you tell it? What you all did? Did you do the lipo? Did you do I the didn't. These done? are my boobs. I don't know why people, ma'am, these are mine. Okay. I don't know why everybody. Because everybody I, think I got fake ones too. I'm and like, I these are my real boobs. These are mine. It's called a Victoria's Secret. <laughs> oh, um, you gonna fix the Victoria's Secretions? No, the Victoria's Secret, the, the push up thing. I got you the must order yours bombshell. Online. Okay, because I cannot go there. Honey. My boobs are not that big though. They look big. I'm only a 30. What am I? 38, like a, 36? No, I'm like a 38, sometimes a 36C. 
Oh shit. My boobs just look big. It's the clothes. Let me tell you, when you get to the double D's, honey. Yeah, okay, I'm not in the double D. Because I used to be an F. I'm I not was a double a whole D. F. No, no, no. But the people think my boobs are fake. They're not. She's stacked like a brick house, y'all. Sorry, my boobs are real. Last question. It's the end times, right? You're at the end. You're about to see God. If you believe in God, all that gets enough. What do you hope God says to you well when done. you get there? Well done. Do you, do you think you're going to get there? I, first of all, I'm getting there. Okay. I'm there. Your name's on the list. I'm on the list. I think he's going to say, well done, mm -hmm. my child. I have had some hiccups. I've had some missteps like many people. But like I said, I don't think that I've ever done anything in this life to be malicious, to be ill-willed. I think as much as people think, oh, she a Scorpio, she from Detroit, da 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 I really don't wish or want bad for people as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Like, it's some people I really should beat up. Mm -hmm. Like, it's no, for real. It's some people that when they run into me, they really should get smacked. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I got too much to lose at this point in my life. But it's I want to get this smack list, though, nah, but maybe nah, later. I, I have a smack list. It's <laughs> it's two people. They getting it on site. Y'all just got to bail me out. I can, Oh, I promise. I promise on God. It's two people on my list. They getting it on site. The, my mother, my best friend, they got the best. They got the bail money ready. <laughs> they already know it's two people on this earth on site. On site. On God. Me and God gonna have to have a conversation about. It, but it's two. I'm working on it. I, 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 I'm a Christian. I'm not a punk. And some, people, some people keep playing with me. So it's two. I'm working. When I get past them two, you know I have graduated, right? Um, but it's two on the list, so um, they can get it on site. Um, but I do believe that God is going to say, well done, my faithful servant. You did what I told you to do. You went out there. You served the people you loved. You gave. You poured your heart. Your heart has been broken, has been stepped on. Just I've been dragged in so many situations where people would have given up. Today I was having a conversation with one of my close friends, Kim Alexander. She said, I don't even know how you wake up some days and function with the things that you have going on. And I told her, I said, I'm not allowed to give those things to the world because if I gave those things to the world, who would trust me? Who would believe in me? Who would follow me? Mm. Because that means that I'm exactly like them. Ooh. And people don't even want to see a mirror of who they are. They want to believe that everything is perfect, that everything is great, that everything is amazing. So I very rarely have real transparent moments mm -hmm. where I can be authentically myself and cry and hurt and say, I'm bothered by this or, you know, somebody hurt my feelings because I just have to be strong. Um, but I don't wish bad on people and I don't, I don't go after people. I called my attorney the other day. I said, we might need to start. So, Cause if I go sue everybody who owe me some money, mm. baby, we good. Like we good, good. Cause people do stuff to me. I'd be like, okay, it's between you and God. I don't even go get my money. Mm. But the other day I started adding up stuff in my head and I'm like, now wait a minute. No, I said, now hold on. I said, now you tripping. <laughs> like, I had to stop myself. I called my attorney. I said, Carla Hines, <laughs> Carla Hines, ESQ. <laughs> We got a list. Some of these people, we're going to have to go make them accountable mm. to do what they said they were going to do in a moment of when they said they were going to do it. Mm. Like, I, 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 I'm, I, like I said, I'm a Christian. I'm not a punk. You just mm -hmm. can't keep taking advantage. So me and God, we're good. I don't think he's going to be. Tell everybody where they can find you and tell them about your book and, of course, your business. My product. Okay. So you can find me everywhere in the entire world. Uh, Shanita Foster, C-H-A-N-I-T-A -A Foster. Uh, you can go click a link in the bio anywhere. You're going to find what you're looking for. Uh, my book, Girl, I'm Not Tripping, uh, I'm Depressed, is out. I have a new book coming out for my birthday. You're the only person who knows this. I think it'll be so close to my birthday that I can tell you because this is going to come out probably in about two weeks. But I, my new book is called I Lied, I'm Not Happy. Oh, wow. And the book is how to stop lying to yourself and how to be truly happy. Mm. And so that's my birthday gift to myself. So go to author, Dr. Shanita Foster, uh, dot com. You'll find that my business envision you. Oh my gosh. Uh, you can find me. Why are you laughing? You can find me. I love it. I am in love. Listen, y'all going to buy something. <laughs> right. Sellers are rich. Today. Buyers are poor. 
you're going to buy some. Mm. If you want to uh, hop on a live train and get something, uh, envisionyou.com backslash Dr. Shanita Foster or just go to shanitafoster.com. You can click and find all the stuff. It's mm-hmm. there. I'm really interested in this, y'all. This, The book, y'all. The two Read books. The book. Read the book. This book is a cheat code to me. Ooh. It's the cheat code. If a, if a man is looking for me and want me, all he got to do is go read the book. He's going to be like, I get you. I understand you. I know. It talks about value. It talks about my love language. It talks about how I need to be loved. It talks about how I've been hurt. That's all part of depression. The book I love it. is the cheat code. If you want to be my friend, read the book. Okay. I'll read the book, girl, because I'm going to be your friend. Understand. So then you be like, girl, you're tripping. You could be like, girl, you really kind of depressed. depressed. You, like you need to go call somebody. Like, go get it together. Go yeah. get it together. Well, thank you, my love. My new friend from the D, what sis. Up, what up, though? Guys, if you love this content, make sure you like comment, subscribe, and share. And if you want to get in contact with us directly, you can reach out to us via email at info at smittyandd.com. Again, that's info at smittyandd.com. And remember, guys, take care of one another.